Okay, so we're now ready to understand microscopically what happens as far as the current is concerned. Okay, so let's take a look at some part of a conductor. So we have a conductor here, say we have our, you know, the, you know, the atomic locations here. Okay, we have our charge carriers. Let us say, you know, let us just take Q to be our charge carriers that are moving in all possible directions okay now, now what's happening is the following now in general okay uh, within a conductor the electrons are constantly so let's say these are our um, charge carriers and uh, you know they're constantly moving in random directions and uh, okay in such a way that if you were to calculate any average velocity for their flow it would end up being zero Okay, now once you apply a potential difference, however, the spectra changes. What's going to happen is that the electrons are now going to be, or the charges are going to experience a force because of the presence of the electric field, and hence they're going to start flowing in the direction from a high voltage to a low voltage. This is These are things that you already understand. As it moves, however, it is still going to have these collisions, but its net drift is going to be in the direction of the flow. Okay, so we ask the you know so this flow of the electrons is basically what constitutes this, the current, the flow of the charges. Let us in our in this discussion just say that we have charged particles of charge Q that are moving. Okay, let n be equal to the number density of the charges. Okay, which is simply the number per unit volume. Okay, so this is that number, and let uh, so let Q be the the charge of the charge carriers. Okay, now let A be the area of the cross section, and let this amount length be delta x. So let us say that in the in in some time delta t okay this volume of charges crosses through an area okay crosses through this area of cross section a so what we know is that the total amount of charge that has gone in this time is going to be equal to the volume which is a times delta x okay multiplied by the number density so this gives us the total number of charges that have gone through and now we have to multiply this by q the charge of each particle in order to get the uh, value of the total charge okay and the current i is simply equal to delta q over delta t okay which happens to be equal to a times n times q times delta x over delta t and this delta x over delta t is simply equal to, so I'm going to write this as n q a times v sub d. Okay, this v d sub d is called is simply delta x over delta t, and it is called the drift velocity of the electrons okay now the this is the effective velocity that the electrons have now when there is no potential difference the drift velocity is going to be zero okay uh, but when there is a potential difference it will start to flow now again understand that the drift velocity okay what we find is much s smaller compared with the actual velocity of the electrons the electrons are moving at very high velocities within the material, okay, like as, as they move between the different collisions. But the collisions are what slow them down, and we'll study this later when we introduce this concept of resistance, okay. So understand the drift velocity itself is going to be a number uh, typically of the order of 10 to the minus 3 or 10 to the minus 4, whereas the, so this is what the, the drift velocities will end up being, okay, whereas the actual speed we'll see the the the, uh, the rms speeds for the electrons will be in the order of 10 to the you know 4 or 10 to the 5 meters per second the
okay so understand like i mean the, the you know between the collisions they are moving at these very high speeds okay but because of the collisions the effective velocity ends up being small all right 